Cardiovascular disease is a major cause of death in Australia. It affects one in six Australians and one person dies from cardiovascular disease every 12 minutes. Cardiovascular disease causes a significant burden on health resources, including over 54,000 hospitalizations and nearly seven times as many living with chronic heart disease. Although chest pain or discomfort are common symptoms of heart attack, some people will not experience chest pain at all, while others will experience only mild chest pain or discomfort. If you ever experience any of these symptoms and they are severe or worsening or persist for longer than 10 minutes, then you should ring triple zero or head to an emergency department where you can be assessed by a healthcare professional. Once you arrive at the ED, a whole series of events are set in motion involving numerous healthcare professionals. Let's take a peek at such a case. Sarah is a 48 year old female who has been experiencing chest pain off and on over the last month. She has been putting it down to being busy and stressed. Over the last few days, it's been getting worse, so she's finally decided to go to the emergency department and get checked out. An exercise stress test involves having Sarah walk on a treadmill until she is unable to exercise any further. Throughout this, constant ECG monitoring will inform us of her heart rate, rhythm and blood pressure. For this test, we use the Bruce protocol. This increases the steepness and speed of the treadmill every three minutes. Sarah has to continue with the protocol until she is unable to exercise further. This gives us the best results for interpreting the data from the test. As a cardiac scientist, it is my job to monitor Sarah's ECG and her blood pressure. My role is also to encourage the patient to do their best in the test as well as keep them safe. Before the test is started, I record a baseline ECG and blood pressure for future reference. Once the test starts, I monitor everything from Sarah's ECG and blood pressure to her ability to walk safely on the treadmill. While Sarah was exercising, her ECG started to change and she began to get chest pain. Once the test was stopped, Sarah recovered and her chest pain went away. Now that the recovery phase of the test has finished, the supervising doctor and I prepare a provisional report for the cardiologist. The supervising doctor explains the results to Sarah and informs her that the changes to her ECG and the chest pain she had may be related to blockages in the coronary arteries. So um, unfortunately the ECG suggests that you've actually had a positive stress test um, and although in ladies of your age that can be a false positive, you know, it's I a strong so. indicator that we should probably go ahead and do what's called an angiogram. Okay. Have you heard about that before? I, I think so, yep. Yeah. Good. Okay, so I think my dad had one. Oh, right. Okay, so the family history <laughs> yeah, is even another reason to do that. <laughs> so basically, what we do is we, um, you know, put a bit of local anaesthetic into the groin, pop some wires up into your heart, um, and then have a look at the vessels around your heart. Okay. And it's actually the gold standard to make sure that there's no coronary artery disease there. Okay. Um, and I think we'll organise and go ahead and do that today. Based on the changes to Sarah's ECG trace while she was exercising, the cardiologist has now referred Sarah for an angiogram. I'm Simon and I'll be the cardiac scientist monitoring Sarah during her angiogram. An angiogram is where a contrast agent, which looks a bit like black dye, is injected into the arteries that supply the heart muscle with blood. An angiogram allows the cardiologist to see if Sarah has any blockages in her coronary arteries. While the angiogram is happening, another cardiac scientist monitors Sarah's heart rate, her heart rhythm and her blood pressure. Sarah's angiogram showed a blockage in one of the cardiac arteries, so the cardiologist uses a small wire stent to open up the blockage and allow the blood to flow through the artery again. Before Sarah was discharged from hospital, the cardiologist requested an echocardiogram, or an echo for short. An echo is a cardiac ultrasound that looks at the structure and the function of Sarah's heart. Hi, I'm Susan and I'm going to take ultrasound images and measurements of Sarah's heart. Ultrasound waves are recorded as they reflect on blood cells and heart muscle. The echo records information about how Sarah's heart is pumping, how the blood is moving around the heart, and it shows how the cardiac heart valves are performing. Do you think clinical measurement scientists may be a career for you? Speak to one of our JCU Biomedicine experts today.